Okay, so I'm going to go through a couple of uh, recurrence equations. Um, is something that's kind of come up consistently in these first couple of weeks. So the first, one of the first examples here is uh, given x of 1 is 0 and x of n uh, is equal to x of n minus 1 plus 5 for n is greater than 1. Although this part is just not that relevant. It's just part of the, I guess, the more formal definition. So, uh, basically here we just start noting out examples. Um, so, okay, we know x of n, great, uh, but we can't solve x of n until we've solved x of n minus 1. So let's substitute in x of n minus 1 for x of n. What does that look like? x of n minus 1 is equal to x of n minus because in this case where x of n, we've now substituted n minus 1 for n, that means the equivalent of n minus 1 has now become n minus 2, because it's 1 before that, plus 5. Cool, this is our formula for how to find n minus 1. Let's substitute this. Back in there. Obviously, this version of it. Oops. So, now, rewriting out the original equation, this one, x of n is equal to, we're substituting this in, x of n minus 2 plus 5, so that's the replacement for this, plus 5, because that's still on the end x. Now we've gone back to describing x of n. Okay, great. Uh, so now we know how to find x of n First, we had it in terms of x of n minus 1. Now we've got it in terms of x of n minus 2. That actually doesn't help us at all, because we still don't know how to find x of n minus 2. So let's just plug it back into the formula to find x of n, the same way that we did this for x of n minus 1. So OK, now to find x of n, we need to find x of n minus 2 is equal to, I'm going to treat it the same way as this, is, x will, uh, is equal to x of n minus 1. So if n is n minus 2, this becomes x of n minus 3 plus 5. Awesome. We now have how to solve n minus 2. This n minus 2, this x of n minus 2, same thing. So we substitute this back in to this equation for this. So, whoops. Now, if we write out this full equation, so I guess the way that this, this confused me when I first looked through the lecture slides, the way this kind of flip-flops back and forth is here is the initial description. And then we're just like, shit, we need to find out what x of n minus 1 is. So we try. Uh, and so here is the description with that updated attempt. And then we go, oh, damn, we still need to find out what x of n minus 2 is. Um, and that's why it kind of alternates back and forth between looking like the same thing every two steps uh, in the examples and the lectures and stuff. Because every in-between step here is just... Oh, how do we find x of n minus 2? Ah, okay, well, it's this formula, um, except with x of n minus 2 instead of x of n. So, now if we substitute x of n minus 2 back in for this x of n minus 2, we get x of n minus 3 plus 5, and that's just the substitution for this part, so we still have this plus 5 plus 5 on the end. And I guess if we kind of draw a line down here and say, oh, okay, well, what does this actually look like? Uh, this becomes equals to x of n minus 2 plus 5. Um, oh no, sorry, actually that was the, the in-between step. We ignore that. When we substitute it back in here, what do we have? Because this is finding out x of n minus 1. That's not actually that interesting to us. Okay, so x of n is equal to x of n minus 2 plus... 2 times 5, right? Because 5 plus 5 is the same as 2 times 5. And then down here, again, we don't really care because we've already tried to work out what x of n minus 2 is. We've substituted it back in here. So, okay, so now we have x of n minus 3 plus 3 times 5. And so we kind of see a, a pretty consistent pattern here emerging. Here we've got, okay, so x of n at any given point of these recurrents we got 2, 2, 3, 3, and everything else in this formula is staying the same. So kind of taking that into consideration, if we expand this out, 
you know, infinite times or, you know, a, a given number of times, what we can kind of say is that x of n is equal to x of n minus i plus 5 times i, 5i. And that kind of makes sense here, right? So, like, if we swap in, we say, okay, i is 2, or x of n minus 2 plus 2 times 5, that's correct. Okay, i is 3, x of n minus 3 plus 3 times 5. Cool. So now what we want to do is substitute in a value for i that will let us solve this equation. So i is just kind of our, our variable. So long as these two i's are the same, it doesn't really matter what i is. i's only real property is that it's the same in both those instances. That's all that we're actually saying by substituting this in for i. So we can kind of make i whatever we want. So what if we make, we're trying to make x of 1, because x of 1 we know, that's the one example we know. So we're desperately trying to make x of 1. So let's let i equal a value that will make this equal 1. And in our case, that is, if we let i equal n minus 1, because basically what that will end up is where we have that x of n minus 1, that means that this is going to expand out to n minus n minus 1, and this expands out to n minus n plus 1, because the minus expands in like that, uh, which is equal to 1. And so we really want x of 1, and this is how we get it. So we're going to substitute in i equals n minus 1. So when we do that, since we've already done the math on the side there, I won't repeat it, we've now got x of 1 plus 5 times i is equal to n minus 1, n minus 1. Awesome. Now, we know that x of 1, if we come all the way up here to our recursive function definition, x of 1 is 0. So, we can substitute that in. x of n is equal to, I'm not going to write the 0, 5 outside of n minus 1. And so that's the solution. Whoops. That's the solution to our recursive equation, and yay.